Hey guys, this is Ruby as always, and welcome back to another tutorial. We haven't done one of these in a while, uh, so I figured I'd go ahead and do one. And this was a much requested one in a lot of the comments about uh, how to do big reactors, kind of how to get it going, uh, what's the different uh, cooling fluids, and all that kind of fun stuff. So we're gonna go over. Whoa, we're gonna go over that in this video today, of course. Uh, now, one quick note: uh, I am doing this on big reactors version 0.3.3a. So, look at whatever your version is. You're probably going to be on a newer one, because you'll be in the future. <laughs> but uh, keep that in mind uh, about whenever you watch this tutorial. Some things may be different. If this tutorial gets extremely out of date, uh, let me know down in the comments below. I'll be happy to, uh, be happy to you know, answer any questions you might have, or just make a whole new version. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this. So basically, how this reactor works is uh, you have your basic casing. Let's go ahead and build one just to show you. Let's come back here. So I'm just going to build a 5x5 five five one. Uh, you can make these pretty much any size you want, uh, any height, stuff like that. I think the ones I use in my LP world are 12x12 12 12 or 15x15. 15 15. Uh, they're pretty big. Uh, they are, let's see, let's come over here. I think it's a, it's not as big as this one. It's somewhere in the middle of this one and that one, so it's pretty big. Uh, we're just in my test world. So if we go ahead and build one, we're just going to build this 5x5 five five one. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we'll fill this all in. Because your base always needs to be uh, the turbine casings, uh, especially when you do it like this. If you're going to be below it, uh, I believe you can put uh, reactor glass and stuff like that there. In your middle, you're going to have your yellorium fuel rod. Uh, oh, yeah, the crafting recipes. This is going to require graphite. Uh, and all this is is just it's just coal smelted in a furnace, and it'll give you a graphite bar. I recommend before you start this process to make a couple stacks because you're going to need quite a bit to kind of get your first reactor going. Maybe not for such a small one like this, but uh, we'll start with, how many is that? Probably three. Uh, three yellorium fuel rods, and this is what's going to hold your fuel. You're going to supply this thing with the Elorium ingots, but we'll get to that here in a minute. Let's focus on building one first. So we're going to go ahead and go 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5. And 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's go ahead and connect them. Get them all nice and connected. There we go. And there we go. So uh, one thing we can go ahead and do is we can put in our reactor glass. The recipe for this is just two glass and a piece of reactor casing. So we'll go ahead and fill these in. I'm going to show you the kind of the basic design that I use for these small ones and that all of our demo ones are using. So let's go ahead and put these here. And there we go. And boom. So uh, now the reactors, they require certain things to be present within the reactor. Uh, first of all, the whole multi-block structure has to be complete. You're going to need a reactor controller, which is made like this. You get four reactor casings, two yellorium or uranium ingots, depends on the ore dictionary, a diamond, and a piece of redstone. You're going to need an access port. Now, you can use just one of these, but I recommend getting two. And there's two different colors. You'll see now they're both kind of this lime green. If we click this outlet mode, it's now going to be blue. So inlet is going to be this yellow lime color. And then your outlet's going to be the blue color, as you can see here. Uh, you have a couple options here to eject fuel or eject waste. Uh, you'll always want to make sure that your eject waste is on and your eject fuel's not on, because uh, all this will do is spit out a bunch of extra to you. And then one other thing you're, you'll always need is a power tap, reactor power tap. So this is going to take four reactor casings and four redstone. And one thing I should say about that, just keep these default uh, I don't know if I said that quite right, but just keep them default. You you probably won't have to change those. So now that we have those, you can see it's complete except for the top. So the next thing you're going to want to do is add your fuel. Now uh, here I have five different fuel types. We have water, redstone, yellorium fluid, or fluid yellorium, I'm sorry, uh, endurium, and then uh, cryothemium. I forget what it's called. Uh, it's the hard stuff to make, though. So uh, with all these different fluids, they do different cooling types. We're going to get into the specifics of that right now, but basically whatever you can afford, I would do. If you can afford this, then definitely do that from the start because this is going to be the best fluid to use. 
However, remember that uh, unlike these where you can just put it at the top and it'll go all the way down, uh, this stuff does not work like that. You have to have a source block for every single hole in there. So, uh, for ease of access, we're just going to use Endorium or Endorium so that we don't have to place a bunch. So we'll just place it around the fuel rod here. There we go, and now we can see it's all still on the top. Next thing you're going to need it is a reactor control rod, which is made from three graphite of uranium, four reactor casings, and a piece of redstone. That's going to go on top of the fuel rod and be flush with the top of the uh, reactor. Then next we can put either reactor casings or reactor glass. And pretty much all of this reactor glass could be reactor casings, if you say you're running low on glass for some reason. Uh, so I just like to do this so you can kind of see inside of it. So now you'll see that uh, the blocks changed, and now they are all kind of have this interconnected texture. This means that the multi-block is now finished, and this will light up red. So the next step is to give it some fuel. So you'll notice inside the fuel rod there, you can see how it's empty and it's hollow. There's nothing in it, right? If we go ahead and grab some uh, yellorium ingots, and we come in here to the access port. Now you can put this in manually, or you can have a uh, item duct, an ME system, anything like that automatically put these in here for you. In my LP world, I just have an ME system handle this for me. So we'll go ahead and throw the yellorium in there, and you can see is that now that we have that in there, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I accidentally clicked that earlier. But now you can see that it's all yellow inside. That means it now has yellorium within it. If we go ahead and right click on the controller, you can see that it's 100% full. And this will also give you a lot of information about how much fuel you can hold, um, your waste, and, uh, and then how many fuel rods you have and stuff like that. This one right here is your casing heat. Uh, these two are going to be pretty much identical, your core heat and your casing heat. Uh, I believe he plans on later on in the mods development maybe doing something different with these. And what's going to help you keep this heat down is your different fluids. So water is not going to be as efficient as endurium. So let's go ahead and turn these on real quick. So right here is your, um, your temperature readout. Here is your RF per tick. Here is your, is your uh, millibuckets per tick. Um, and that is your fuel burn-up rate, and that's also where this fluid comes into handy because if it's running hotter, you're going to burn more fluid. If it's running cooler, you're not going to burn as much fluid, which means it's not going to use as much yellorium in it. So let's go ahead and grab a couple stacks, and we'll go ahead and throw some in there. Looks like I already did, actually. Uh, and then here is your fuel reactivity. Uh, don't worry about that. And we'll go ahead and activate this reactor. You can see it's going to start heating up, and it is ridiculously hot in there because it's just water. So let's go ahead and turn all of these guys on, and we're going to let them run for a minute so we can kind of see the different heat levels. And there we go. So back to this one. Now that we have our fluid in here, or our, our uh, fuel, and we don't have it on yet, so if we go ahead and turn this guy on, it's going to start building up uh, RF inside. It's got an internal buffer of 10 million, I think. Is that 10 million? That looks like 10 million. That is 10 million. Okay. And then over here, you can see we're starting to produce uh, RF per tick. Uh, and as you can see, we're producing 1,461 RF per tick. And we have a 0 0.084 millibuckets per tick burn-up rate. And we're sitting at a cool 500 degrees. So you can see, if you remember from that water, this shot all the way up to like 2,000. Now, while it's not implemented in the mod before, I've heard things about maybe these things blowing up in the future. In a future video, we're going to turn, we're going to cover turbines, which do blow up, which is that big old thing right there. And if those get too uh, sped up, they will actually blow up. But for right now, these don't, so they're perfectly safe to put in the middle of your base for now. <laughs> uh, so this is basically it. Uh, down here is your activate and deactivate reactor. And this is your auto eject waste and then do not auto eject waste. So what's waste exactly? Well, if you have yellorium going in, you're going to then have plutonium coming out. Uh, while none of these have it produced quite yet, let's check a couple of these other guys. Wherever they are. are any of these have it, you have, it, have it yet? None of these guys have produced it yet. But these guys produce plutonium as, or I'm sorry, not plutonium, cyanide as a byproduct. You then would put the cyanide reprocessor. This is a machine that you can make. If we go ahead and take a look at the recipe, 
It's four reactor casings, an iron ingot, two pistons, a yellorium fuel rod, and a piece of redstone. And what you're going to do is that these guys are going to produce cyanite. Do we still not have any? I'd like to show you. Ah, okay, cool. We'll just grab one out of the, out of the uh, NEI. So if we go ahead and grab some cyanite, and this is what's going to come out of the big reactors as waste. If we throw this guy in here, it's going to start processing. It requires two cyanite per plutonium. Now this guy does require water, so keep that in mind. So down here, I have an aqueous accumulator and a fluid duct and an energy cell providing it with RF as well as water. And it's going to start producing us plutonium. Now what's plutonium for exactly? Not a whole lot, other than maybe you can use it to for decoration. Uh, it only has one recipe, and it requires two. And that is for the turbine controller, which is kind of the next step in big reactors. And that's what that big old thing is over there. So it just takes two plutonium and four turbine housings and a diamond to make that. But we are going to cover that in a future video, uh, because that's a whole separate beast from these guys. So... Uh, as you can see, these guys are still uh, clucking away. If we go ahead and come back to this guy. Uh, actually, let's just go ahead and let's look at the RF per tick that these guys are producing. So, 2000 Celsius, very, very hot, has a high burn up rate, and it's only producing 556 flux per tick. Right? This guy, whoa, a lot cooler, right? It's a lot cooler, and it's producing a lot more fuel and it's got a lower burn up rate so you can tell redstone is a better fluid to use than water so one two three <laughs> krf per tick and as you can see uh -uh, not so good now it does have a lower burn up rate however it's not as cool as redstone so it has a lower burn up rate than redstone however it doesn't produce as much power it's only producing 561 but it does have a lower burn up rate than water so uh, this is this would be better to use than water, uh, but honestly, you're gonna have to have uh, a bunch of yellowium to kind of get this started. The next step is endurium. Now this guy is producing 1,412 flux per tick. It has a 0 0.081 uh, burn-up rate, which is the same as this uh, fluid yellowium. However, it's producing more power, so we can see 1,441. This is producing 1,220. So we're getting a lot more flux per tick out of the Endurium, and it's running just as cool. Now the uh, Cryotherium, <laughs> I got, I've got to learn how to pronounce that. It is Cryo, it's this fun stuff right here, Cryotherium. I don't know, you guys will tell me how it's pronounced, I'm sure, in the comments. Now, here's this guy. So, uh, it's almost full of buffer, actually. This guy is producing 1,371 flux per tick with a 0 0.081 millibucket per tick burn up. So 0 0.081, and we can see that this guy is actually producing more power, which doesn't seem quite right, uh, but I guess that's how it works in this version. I believe in a different version, these two were reversed, like this one was always the better one, uh, but I guess that's all debatable. So now that we kind of have this basic user interface figured out, and we have our cyanide reprocessor figured out, um, basically all you have to do to uh, get this stuff is if we just grab us a pick and you can break it now this is going to turn into ore uh, much like kind of how your iron does and stuff like that uh, this does work in a pulverizer so if you have a pulverizer I'd recommend running it through there or you can just cook it up straight and get yellowium ingots like so one other thing I'd like to cover is while these guys aren't producing very much uh, RF per tick so as we can see at maximum this thing is producing 1387 and 1354 stuff like that uh, is that these guys aren't producing a whole lot of power let's go take a look at this guy over here for example this guy is probably off right now so if we this guy isn't a good example to look at uh, let's come down here this guy here let's go ahead and turn him on so he's gonna heat up nicely and he's going to start producing lots and lots of flux per tick. Now, as you can see, we are currently, let's break that, so it's a computer port. Uh, I can do a tutorial on those as well if you guys are interested on how to control this with computer craft. Uh, so now this guy is producing 11,690, 11,700 RF per tick. So, what's the problem here? So if we take a look at this energy conduit, 
shift for details. This thing at maximum can only support 10,000 RF a tick. So that's a problem because this guy is producing a thousand more than it can transfer. Now while that might be good for your buffer, it's not good if you want to be able to get all the power out of here or say don't store anything in the buffer and always get it out. One thing you might have to do is now this one doesn't produce quite as much power uh, as the one I have in my world. I think it's a bit bigger than this. Uh, in my LP world that is. Is that you may have to do dual power taps. And this is basically just so that you can split the power between the two. So for example if we take a look at this one and let's grab a power tap. There we go. So if we were say going to use this one and let's say obviously the one this small is not going to produce this much power. Oh, you can't do that there actually. So if we come right here and there we go. So we got two power taps. So if this was producing let's say 20 20,000 something RF per tick. If we then put a redstone energy conduit on both of these guys, it would get 10,000 each and we would max it out. Uh, I believe in my LP world they're producing about 18,000 the ones I have I'm not quite sure and I have two of these guys they then run up <clears throat> and they all connect to uh, a bunch of tesseracts or not tesseracts I'm sorry energy cells there's about three resonant energy cells and there, it has a twin right next to it which does the same thing so basically I've got like 300 or 400 million power storage with these guys and that's probably the best thing to do just to make sure that you're getting all the power that you can out of these guys so just to kind of show you guys what this will do uh, is here I have a computer craft uh, script that I ran I'll actually link a video down in the description of this video where you can see me code this on my LP world but uh, this is the kind of cool stuff that you can get from these reactors now you do need the upgraded uh, big reactors version you also need the upgraded computer craft version uh, I'll put those versions down in the comments, uh, down in the description below so you can kind of know. But here you can see reactor 1 is this guy, which is currently offline. And then we have reactor 2, which was that guy that we were, we were tinkering on down there. And you can see that it's active, how much RF it's, it's producing, how much it's storing, and how much the heat is, and all kinds of stuff. There's also different things that you can get from this um, that I just chose to not display on here. That is going to be it for the tutorial today. If you have any questions about big reactors that, that, that didn't get answered in this video, feel free to leave it down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer your question. If you enjoyed this video or if it helped you out, our rating would be very much appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe. As always, I have Feed the Beast content coming out almost every other day, if not every day. Thank you.